out there in the real world, there are many factors that affect human well-being and influence change more generally. Even if we successfully manage to implement a development program and see that changes um, amongst the target population improve, we, we can't even say that the program contributed to at least some of the observed change. And this is really where impact evaluation comes in. I'm Carl Hughes. I'm a Senior Evaluation Specialist of the Independent Evaluation Department of the Asian Development Bank. Impact evaluations are special studies that seek to rigorously examine the extent to which a program or even a specific development intervention actually made a difference, you know, whether the intervention worked or not. And increasingly, such studies are also looking to identify you know, what particular contexts where the specific interventions did or did not work, how effective interventions actually work to generate their effects, and who in particular actually benefits, because not all interventions benefit people in the same way. And really finally, how much does any impact that have been achieved actually cost in monetary terms. So impact evaluations really look to identify what works, for whom, where, why, and, and at what cost. Why is impact evaluation important? Well, over a hundred billion dollars of official development assistance continues to flow to poor and middle income countries each year. So the average man or woman on the street uh, may wonder why poverty is not ended with such vast sums of money flowing to developing countries. But we really know the development process is complex, is deeply political, and, and quite frankly, it's messy. So no matter how much effort we put into designing a development intervention, there will always be a degree of uncertainty as, as to whether or not it will work. As development actors, we sometimes fail to get it right, and we actually end up doing the wrong things. And of course, doing the wrong things, even if we do these things well, is obviously a waste of effort and resources. So again, this is really where the critical role of impact evaluation lies. While it's not a panacea, it can help us to increase our chances of doing the right things and doing the right things more and more often. The dominant approach used in impact evaluation are statistical, and these involve using some kind of control or comparison group. So in impact evaluation, we're really trying to get at what difference did the intervention actually make. So let's say we have some development outcome, like income. Even without our intervention, the level of income amongst the target population represented by this dotted line will actually change over time. In this hypothetical example, income has actually increased a little bit over time. Now let's suppose that we implemented our intervention or our program. Here, this green line illustrates what change would have happened when we implement our intervention. And you can see here, actually, there was no added value of the program in terms of change until about midway through the program. Then the impact of the program started to kick off and we get some gains in terms of the outcome. Now, the difference between the change that would have happened without the intervention and the change that actually happened with the intervention is the net impact of the program. And the way in quantitative impact evaluation we try to estimate the net impact of a program is with some kind of control or comparison population to allow us to estimate what change would have happened in the absence of the intervention. While quantitative approaches have really dominated the impact evaluation landscape, there are many development interventions, such as those related to policy form and institutional capacity building, that are critical for development, but unfortunately do not lend themselves to either the experimental or quasi-experimental approaches for measuring impact. So we have to try a, a different approach to, to causal inference. So let's say, for example, we have a development outcome. And in this case, it's the institutional capacity. So it's the capacity maybe of an institution to actually provide services to the population. So these are cases where it's not really possible or feasible to use a controller comparison group. The first step in this approach, what we'll try to do, is try to identify whether or not the change has happened. So in this case, we have uh, the pre-intervention and the post-intervention, and there's been an actual change over time, or the change has not happened. So there's been no increase in the, in the capacity of this institution. Now, if we actually find out that there was a change, 
The second step is to try to look at all the possible factors that could have been responsible for bringing about the change. So we may have a large number of factors that we try to interrogate to see if they possibly could have been responsible. And we try to see where does the evidence lie in terms of determining which factors were actually responsible. And we may even try to look at the, the relative contribution of, of those factors that were actually responsible for bringing about the change. This particular approach to impact evaluation is often implemented using um, rigorous qualitative research methods and is not yet mainstream within the field of impact evaluation. There is really still a lot of methodological development that needs to take place in terms of um, refining this approach. However, it is widely recognized that the field of impact evaluation should be issues-led rather than methods-led, so this really represents an important frontier for the field of impact evaluation. Despite our best attention, poverty and extreme inequality continue to exist on really a large scale in the world today. And for the Asian Development Bank, these are critically important issues. And impact evaluation is an important piece of the puzzle. It will help increase our chances of both identifying and scaling up the right things to make extreme poverty a thing of the past.